Hello, I want to talk about hemorrhoids and magnesium. Um, studying this from a naturopathic perspective, you know, hemorrhoids, I was taught in naturopathic school, naturopathic school, naturopathic school of naturopathy, naturopathy school. It just sounds funny, doesn't it? But in France, I was taught that, um, you know, the hemorrhoids were a result of something being backed up in the liver. The liver is is backed up and so therefore it's trying it's like a delegation it's it's something is not able to process and so this is kind of expanding in that direction and so there's uh, whether or not that be perfectly true I do believe um, that um, the liver does play a role here in hemorrhoids and and liver detoxification and magnesium and its role in the glutathione production its role in the phase 2 detoxification its role in the uh, desaturation of estrogens into water solubles and how it's able to get these things out properly is going to lead to um, less congestion in general now, um, I also think that like what Dr. Carolyn Dean had stated about magnesium and hemorrhoids, um, you know, talking about just general muscle knowledge, not knowledge of how muscles um, contract. And so the contraction mechanism is not caused by um, magnesium. It's typically the mechanism that creates the decontraction. And so magnesium helps to relax the muscles in the intestines as well. Whenever the magnesium levels are high enough in a general way, optimal levels are reached, not just like not near the level of pathology, which is what a typical blood test points at, but optimal levels. And so when the optimal levels are there, the, the, the muscles can relax correctly. And so this, without this, with low levels of magnesium, this muscle relaxation part, the part that's parasympathetic, the part that's relaxing, the, the, the passive part versus the active part, this part is limited, and this creates these kind of spasms, contractions, etc., and then you get constipated. So then the constipation puts pressure on the anal canal, which, you know, constipation does not just have to come from there. It can also come from people that never eat fats and low-fat diets and... You know, it can come from um, the way you eat in general, like um, uh, uh, lack of fiber, no fat, um, uh, lack of um, flora, you know, like a very sterilized type of diet or a lot of vaccines, antibiotics and things that keep that flora sterile. I mean, why do you think dogs are always trying to find the smelliest stuff they can find to eat? Because it triggers their flora. You know, and I know this sounds crazy, but the shark meat, the rotted, infested shark meat in Scandinavia that they would eat to become a man or whatever that was, like they're starting to realize that some of these crazy, stinky, unbelievably pungent uh, odors, whenever they were consumed, not only did they not taste like they smelled, they tasted better, but they triggered a euphoria in the body and like a repopulation instantaneous. And some of them even lifted depressions like long depressions, maybe not mental depressions, but body depressions or some, some, some closer to body based depression, um, than just like, you know, psychological trauma or whatever, um, or the avoidance of such or whatever. Um, so this is, um, you know, um, this is a side note, but the flora is key, you know, and how we are with the flora and what, what's going on there. Probiotics and lactofermentation, broth, butyric acid, like healthy fats, etc. When you say healthy fats, it doesn't mean anything anymore because all the fats are coming from these big super fat animals that are way too obese and so their quality is, is diluted and they don't have like European pigs they're like very small you know so they're much more concentrated there's a quality there we've lost that in america so you might have to import some of those fats that's why imported butter is so big in america right so anyway um so this puts pressure on the anal canal this lack of const this constipation and lack of contraction and causes the hemorrhoids to pop out so what was given in the past epsom salt epsom salt baths uh for this rectal pain and so here we are again with magnesium being a key feature there uh, in trying to relax that, open that back up, and allow that to heal and give it what it needs. Now the problem with Epsom salt is it's not made like it used to be. It's not from Epsom anymore, and it's just made through processes and, 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 and isotopes usually and, or electrification or something they're doing with 
upgrading the, the, the substrata to, to, to separate the magnesium, the sulfate, and all this stuff. So um, that's not a healthy process anymore either. And so Epsom salt usually has a superficial healing. It, it helps detoxify the skin and some of the things that the liver has already pushed to the skin, and then they get their final exodus. But as far as intracellular magnesium, and what you need is magnesium chloride. You don't need the sulfate. You need something different. So this goes internally. Well, it goes through the transdermal route, just like Epsom salt, but it, 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 it aims internally. The chloride molecule is, uh, aims into the intracellular level, and um, whereas the sulfate has more of an external um, um, interest, uh, intercellular um, activity. Now, this is not a perfect science, but there's some truth to it, okay? So, um, like, you know, you have yin and yang. You have one does this, one does that, but then there's a piece of the opposite in each, right? So, um, so, um, so hemorrhoids can be helped by high levels of magnesium. So we need to take this daily. You can also put them there locally, but the problem is you want to dilute it because the magnesium, especially if you're buying the the good stuff, the, the right stuff, it's maximum concentration. It's very strong, and it's not healthy for healing anything that's cauterizing or healing or scabbing or anything of that nature. It's not going to be healthy for uh, at that dilution, but it will be if you dilute it. So if you get it down to 15% with some spring water, glass bottle spring water, and then you cut that down to 15% of this of the magnesium oil, the transdermal, then you can use that solution, or you can even taste the solution to make sure it's just a little bit bitter, but not too bitter. And then you can use that internally, and that can help heal that area. But uh, and this is well known. I don't need to have a study or be a doctor to say that. This was done in hospitals in between both world wars. They were using, you know, um, magnesium chloride of a, of a baser quality. And so they know about this already. Even dentists are using this 15% solution for, for healing of the gums and things like that. So there's a lot going on there that's already been proven. So, but up, up your grade of that. They all had a bad quality of those same molecules uh, that was solvent extracted, and et cetera. Get the right stuff that comes from a natural stone that's a natural state magnesium chloride. You can only find that through these healthy blue glass bottles, Zechstein inside logo, meaning it comes exactly from the city, Vendam, where this natural salt pillow formation is found. You can't fake that or recreate it, and there's only one an original source. A lot of the people pretending to be Zechstein, genuine or ancient or Permian or whatever, these are all... Uh, fake Zechsteins. They're not coming from the Zechstein inside. You can call them and ask them if you need to. And so where they're getting their stuff, typically Asia, it's it's extracted and solvent extracted from potassium mining. It's called derivative magnesium. And then it's resold. And then they purify it of contaminants. And then it's not the same thing. It's sterile. You want the right stuff. It's only $3 a week. Come check us out at theheartoftradition.com for that and other health tips.